Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Star Bright Quilt Along. My name is Holly Ann Knight of String and Story, and it is my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Thank you all to all of you who are already here, ready to rock and roll with me. This is my very first time streaming live on YouTube like this, where I've pre-scheduled it. So thank you for being part of kind of the founding kickoff bit of this. I'm going to make one little adjustment to our camera angle here. And then I'm gonna jump over and make one little adjustment to my light and give everyone a moment to hop on. This is very, very exciting. You guys can see I've got the navy colorway of a Starbright Quilt Along uh, top behind me. I'm gonna be making the cream colorway with you guys in the coming weeks. This is so very thrilling. All right, let me get this pulled up on my phone. Ooh. All right, well, I wanna be able to see y'all's comments while I am chatting along here let's see well there has to be a secret to seeing the comments let's see what we can do here <laughs> keep saying hi down in there for me i'm going to make a couple of announcements to get us started in just a second here we go dana lou tira lynn one Prouse fan love it susan and Jeannie, kayla monica Lori. Oh, it's so fun to see you guys. Yes, my live YouTube debut. So guys, um, let's do a few housekeeping things. We are right at 11 o'clock on the nose. So I'm gonna do a few housekeeping things while folks are continuing to join us. We have over a hundred folks joining in on the Starbright Pulse Along. And if you are here and you're not officially joining us yet, I hope you will be today. So this is the very first time that I've used a pre-scheduled live on YouTube. We have so many folks who are joining in from both Facebook and Instagram that I felt like this was gonna be a good central location. So each week I will be making um, a new live um, kind of setup and be emailing the link out to folks who have purchased the Winter Hexagon Minis pattern. This is the pattern bundle that contains the Star Bright quilt. More on that in a moment. So I'll be sending a new link each week, but go ahead and hit subscribe to my YouTube channel. I don't know where to point. So just like pretend I know where to point to tell you to subscribe. <laughs> but if you subscribe, there's a Starbright Quilt Along uh, playlist and each video uh, set up each week will get added to that playlist. So you can always come to YouTube to my channel and find what you need in that playlist. If you're like, I don't know where the email with the, with the link went. All right. Oh, let us close Slack so we don't get interrupted all the way through. All right, so that's first housekeeping thing. We're going to be here on YouTube. Second housekeeping thing, when we are done here live, these videos will get added to both Facebook and Instagram as well. So if at any point you miss um, an episode of our Quilt Along in the next few weeks, you'll be able to see all the info uh, posted across social media. So you won't necessarily have to come dig around on YouTube. It should be nice and easy to find uh, via my other social media channels as well. Number three, if you are here and you have not yet joined the Starbright Quilt Along, and I'll mention this at the end as well in case we convince you over our next bit of time together, uh, but we are going to be making this here quilt that's behind me. It is a big block, modern, traditional star quilt. It has four large star blocks like this, all right? Um, I am selling kits for two colorways, the navy, which I just held up for you guys, and the cream, which I'm gonna be making over the next few weeks, but you can make this in any color of your choosing. These colorways do happen to coordinate with the Quilting Rockstar Thread Collection that is releasing next month. Now, if you want to jump in now and you're like, I don't wanna wait on fabric to ship, I've got a great stash, I just need the pattern, uh, the schedule, the pattern, links to kits, links to the thread collection, everything is in the caption of this video on the Starbright Quilt Along page. I will also update the link there each week to get you over to YouTube, all right? I think that's our housekeeping. If you have any questions, obviously pandemic over, you have makeup and hair done. Look at this. I know, right? I like, I'm ready to be here in the world. I like this angle. I can stretch my arms all the way out and they don't get cut off. All right. Um, also, I don't know if she's here with us live, but special shout out to Lydia. Uh, Y'all know Rockstar Lydia. She made me this shirt several years ago. It says Quilting Rockstar. Felt like it was appropriate for our time together today. All right. So we are five minutes in, my dear quilting rock stars. Let us rock off on our cutting here. Now, I am not going to give you exact measurements as we are cutting, we are, but we are going to cut together, okay? So I'm working on the cream. So I will be starting with using this cream color, which is um, Paper Studio Fabrics rice paper. I'm going to be cutting out my center diamonds. Um, let's see. I, I know I need more than that. Oh, I didn't update the colorway on here. Let me update my own colorway real quick. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. 
rice paper for my center diamonds. I also need rice paper down for my background slash rice paper and rice paper. See, this is why I keep both pages handy. So let's we'll start with those center diamond squares. Like I said, I'm not gonna give you guys exact measurements as we're doing this, but we're, we're gonna be here cutting together. Um, if you watch social media later today and into tomorrow, I am gonna be sharing um, kind of an easy peasy tutorial on um, using a rotary cutter if you are new to quilting. If you are new to quilting, this is a great quilt along for you. Now I'm not gonna be walking through the details of every pattern, but because we'll be working together, and there are lots of other quilters stitching along. There will be me and others that you can ask questions to. All right, let's see. Lori, I'm not even surprised. So Lori's like, I may or may not have like already cut my pieces. Yeah, I know. I knew you would, I knew you would. All right, I'm gonna start with a very awkward cut here. I need to square off the end of my bolt. So we're gonna be stitching, we're gonna be chatting. Now, the, the Starbright Quilt Along came about because the Quilting Rockstar Thread Collection is coming out. Now, let's see, where's my box? Do I have a box handy? Let me show you guys what the box looks like. It's very exciting. Here we go. So this here is the Quilting Rockstar Thread Collection. Many of you guys who ordered kits from me, yours will be coming soon. Uh, they're en route from Italy now. You can see a little peaky peaky on the back here. There is an off-white, a gray, a turquoise, a mustard, an orange, and a navy here in this collection. Um, so the Starbright Quilt Along started as the Quilting Rockstar Thread Collection is coming out. We need, we need to celebrate. We need to do a thing, right? This will be very fun. Let us, let us make a quilt that um, then we will want to use our threads with. But the more I thought about it, the more I remembered how much different this time last year felt, right? This time last year, we were approaching a month into this pandemic. Things were still real scary. We didn't really know, you know, are, are we all going to be all right, right? And in many ways, no, the answer to that ultimately in many ways was no, we're not. We are all changed forever by the events of the last year. Um, but those of you, you know, those of you who are here who are OG members of the Quilting Rockstars community, you remember this time last year as we kind of looked at each other virtually and went, how do we do this? How do we do this pandemic thing as a community? And um, I, re I remember just dreaming up any kind of quilt along, any kind of community event I could wrap my brain around because I knew more than anything, we had to have a feeling of sticking together. You know, all right, I've cut my center diamond of this piece here that goes in the center of our star. More, I'm going to finish that thought in just a second. Let me make sure I know what I'm cutting next. The next thing that I am cutting is my large background squares. Let's see where you guys are at. Good morning, good morning, Sweden and Texas and Arizona and Leela. Oh, Brandy, sorry, your uh, login name is Leela. Brandy, I'm so glad you're new to quilting and that you're here. This is so exciting. And Lawanda, you are new as well. This is brilliant. And hello, Francie Joe. So, a year ago, right? We're looking at each other virtually. We're going, how, how are we going to do this? And I remember just dreaming up anything I could think of. We, we did a uh, dogwood blossoms quilt along. We did a, um, let's see, what size do I need these guys to be? Okay. Um, we did a dogwood blossoms quilt along. We did a range backpack quilt along. I wish these edges were even. That's maybe the most frustrating thing about cutting fabric is like making sure your edges stay like trimmed up. You know what I mean? Um, and we just, you know, I, none of us had ever lived through a pandemic before. I'm no expert on living through a pandemic. Um, but I do know a little bit about mental wellness and community. A little bit. And I don't think I will ever be able to put into words how much this community 
has meant over the last year. You know, from where I'm standing, I broke my ankle twice in 2020. Um, I had an emergency appendectomy. I spent a lot of the year uh, being very aware of the fact that like both my parents and my husband are high risk. Uh, with COVID-19 and wondering as, as kind of like the designated go out in the world person and like get to the things we need. Um, you know, was I going to be the person who brought it home to devastating consequences? Um, my grandfather passed away, uh, just kids growing, um, continuing to struggle. Y'all, if you've been around here, you know, I had horrible postpartum depression definitely have experienced like recurring symptoms of depression with the pandemic. I think that's a common story, right? And, and that's just my story. That's just one of us. And we are a very large community. And every single one of you has a story from this last year, a layered and complex story of this last year of the highs and lows, the wins and losses, the fears, the anxieties, all the things. And I know for me, I will never be able to put into words how thankful I am that we all over the world sewed together <laughs> through, you know, 2020 and into 2021 the way that we did. I, I, don't th I don't think I'll ever quite get the right words for that. And... Maybe some of y'all feel that way too. Maybe some of y'all feel that way too. Am I being am I being responsible in how I'm putting this? How many of these do I need? Okay, I was like, I don't know if I'm be I might be over here wasted fabric. I'm talking. I will warn you guys. Um, <laughs> I have double checked the yardage requirements, um, and they work, but they do require a certain amount of attention. So it is highly likely that I will make a cutting error while we're here together because I'm running my mouth. Um, and so we arrive here. Here we are a year later. This is taking a very long time to say, but here we are a year later. And as the, the Quilting Rockstar thread collection was coming out, as the weather is warming up, my gorgeous cherry tree is blooming. It just felt time to celebrate this community. And so this Star Bright Quilt Along, we are here as a community. We are here to celebrate um, that a year later, we're still standing. A year later, we're still sewing together. We're still taking care of each other virtually. We are still celebrating each other. Um, a year later, we are resilient. We are global. We come from every possible age, every possible quilting ability, race, country, language, faith walk. We are all so different. And yet here, we can come together. And to me, these big old stars, um, represent the way that each of you felt like such a light over the last year and the way that we've been able to be lights for one another over the last year. So if you are here, thank you. Thank you for being part of this community. I hope you will enjoy this as a celebration. Um, you know, my goal each week as we come on and we begin to cut fabric together, um, more than anything is just to hang out and celebrate. And, and make this gorgeous quilt as kind of a memory of, you know, last year we, we made dogwood blossoms as um, a symbol of the hope we were longing for, right? And I feel like we're entering a season now of, of hope fulfilled, that we there's a light we hope and pray at the end of the tunnel with this thing. And whew, it feels so good, you know? All right, let me see where you guys are at. Let me see where you guys are at. I knew this t-shirt would come up. All right. Um, let's see. Jeannie get, is on the wait list for vaccine on Friday. Jeannie, that's so exciting. Hubster and my parents get their second on Thursday and Friday. I get my first on Monday. So we are, I'm just saying, I feel like I have some rock stars to come visit after this last year. I'm going to have to do some traveling. You found your fabric. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. Bev, I feel like it's been forever. Hello, Cindy. Yes, you can't leave the fabric behind at the store. It would feel so left out. All right, I'm working on cutting my large background squares. Large background squares. Uh, Marilyn says, I want to need that Rockstar tee. So I knew that was going to come up. I definitely want to have quilting Rockstar t-shirts. Um, so stay tuned. I, got, I It's on the list. Probably before the end of 2021. Like, it's on the list. Fear not. Um... 
Yes, yes, yes. Lori, I love how you know this. Is there a color? Oh, yes, the instructions are with navy pink. So let me read this out. This is a great question. Okay, so if you are making the navy colorway, your center diamonds, I'm going to read this slow so that you can jot this down. You can also come back and rewatch it. So write down 15 minutes and 20 seconds is where I read this. Um, the center diamond is rice paper. The diamond in a square is paprika. The star points are paprika. That's the orange. Rice paper is cream. Paprika is orange. I'll translate that. Uh, large background squares are abyss or navy. Uh, the small background squares are navy. The main corner triangles are uh, the mustard yellow. And then the secondary corner triangles are light blue. Okay. If you are making the cream colorway, let me make sure that I have this correct in my notes before I read it out to you. Um, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you are making the cream colorway, which is what I'm cutting right now, your center diamond will be cream. Your diamond in a square triangles will be orange. Your star points will be orange. Your large background squares will be cream. Your small background squares will be cream. Your main corner triangles will be light blue. And your secondary corner triangles will be mustard. Okay? So there you are. So 15... Uh, 25 to 17 minutes. Yes, yes, yes. Stephanie, thank you for asking that. That was very good. Yep. So colorway, different colors that we're using, different color families in order to create this quilt. Um, and what Stephanie was asking is basically, did I have a comparison chart? So now we now we have read it out at the very least. All right, is this gonna? Of course, these edges aren't even because in what universe could I possibly have even edges? This is what happens when I've got two end of bolt pieces for my stuff, you guys. Also, I've learned a very valuable lesson. Um, some of you guys know that string and story offering kits is very new. That has just begun in the last month or so. Um, I'm very aware of that as a business owner, that it's something I'm unfamiliar with and new at and all the things. But here's something I'm learning. I, I used to always complain when I would get cuts of fabric and one end would just be ratchet, just like really, really like, do these people know how to cut fabric? And here's something I have learned. <laughs> the ends of bolts are a mess. And I think all those times that I had very strong feelings <laughs> about like, why, why is my fabric not neater? I'm like, oh, upon reflection, that was probably an end of bolts. And it probably wasn't anybody's fault. This is what ends of bolts are like. All right, I'm gonna actually count this out because I don't trust myself. One, two. <laughs> um, when I'm talking, my ability to math gets even worse than usual. So I'm like, I, I don't want to miscut if I can help it. All right. Yes, yes, yes. All right. I'm so glad that you asked that question, Stephanie. That was incredibly useful. Thank you, my dear. All right. Let us. Now I got to get rid of my salvage. Okay. So we are here celebrating. And y'all know. Uh, Y'all know I love any excuse for gratitude practice or celebration around here at String and Story. So I want you to drop two things in the comments for me. Um, the first thing is I want you to drop in the best thing that has happened in the last year. You only need one, right? I understand that just as I shared some of the low points of my last year, like we've all had heavy stories over the last year. Um, but I want you to share the best thing that has happened in the last year, something that just brings you lots of joy. Number two, I want you to share the thing you are most looking forward to in the upcoming year. All right. So if we're, if we're celebrating resilience and diversity and adventure and community and all of those things, 
then I know that there's some things about that that we can celebrate from this last year and the year ahead. All right. I love that, Amy. Uh, the and each individual block is 36 inches. So that is that's a great. So Amy says that she's making smaller quilts for Project Linus. And like that's makes such a great starting place for a kiddo quilt and honestly is a great size for a baby quilt. Love it. I'm making four blocks. I'm going to have two very large throws at the end of this. I feel like they might look really cute like in our bedroom. Hmm. Food for thought. All right. Okay, Lori, I love that. Lori says if you have a, the extra large tripology ruler, it works great to cut this fabric. Love it. Uh, Jeannie says, all my family has been well, no COVID. Amy says, getting vaccinated, looking forward to seeing our kids and grandkids soon. Marianne says, learning to stay home. Um, <laughs> Marie, was that still too fast? I'm so sorry. I'll, you know what? I will make a note. I will send an email out to all of y'all who are stitching along with me and I will, I will, I'll put those color comparisons in there for you guys. Um, Y'all have stayed healthy, learned how to make masks, found your bio half siblings. Oh, wow. Next year, seeing your daughter since it's been over 12 months. Yes. You stayed healthy. Looking forward to hugging your grand boys. Jennifer says, I realize I can live with my hubby 24 hours a day and not kill him. So retirement won't be as hard as I think. You know, I think there is something really valuable to that, Jennifer. Um, my dad has traveled two to four days a week for as long as I can remember until this pandemic. And there was definitely a moment at the beginning where mom and I were like, he's home all the time. What do we do? <laughs> I'm like, I don't live there anymore, but I'm over there a lot because we live very close to them. And uh, yeah, that was an adjustment. But I think that's a really um, valuable adjustment in a relationship, you know? All right, let's see. Uh, I'm going to be behind on these. Carrie says, best thing was finding a fabulous social bubble that kept all of us sane. Yes. Karen says, best thing grandson was born last week. That's amazing. Laura says, I'm celebrating my daughter and granddaughter Karen moving out and gaining their independence. Love it. Austin Pastor gave me time to work on free motion quilting. 2021 will bring grandchild number nine. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad that they're going to be coming to live with you, Bev. Stay healthy, Francie Joe. You guys have had adventures on adventures on adventures. If you were new around here, Francie Joe and her husband took these wonderful, wonderful excursions this fall to go see the, the leaves and foliage and things and shared photos with the Quilting Rockstars group on Facebook. And it just, it was so great. That was great medicine, like getting to live vicariously through your beautiful photos. I love it. Best thing that happened was completing the Free Motion Quilting Academy. Oh, thank you. Cindy said, getting my 80-year-old grandparents through the year without COVID illness. That is so exciting. Sorry, I'm clapping out of just like sheer joy. Um, Yes, Marianne, like being discriminating about what you're getting yourself back into. I love that. Looking forward to getting out. Sequoia sounds wonderful. Oh my goodness. I love it, you guys. Keep those rolling. If you got more than one, give, give me more than one. We just have not had the opportunity to really like celebrate some of this good stuff in a minute. All right. Do, 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 do. Do 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 do. All right, I don't think I've miscut anything so far, which is very exciting. <laughs> I think I think we're surviving. I think we're surviving. I'm always nervous cutting on cam cutting on camera is probably the thing. You guys, this will this will be hilarious to you guys. Cutting on camera is probably the thing that makes me the most nervous. Um, because the stakes feel very high. I'm like, I don't want to mess this up. Okay, I didn't mess it up. I was like, as I said this, I might have just messed this up. Um, the stakes feel very high, uh, both in terms of like, I don't want to waste fabric by like repeatedly miscutting, uh, but also I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> and I'm like, that would be so traumatic for all of us. All right, let's see. How many of these did I need? Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so large background squares. 
D for done. Now we're gonna do these small background squares and then we will be done with the rice paper or the cream color. Um, yes, that is correct information. We need a whole bunch of these, like a whole bunch of these. Do, do, do. All right, let's see what's up with you guys. Hey, Judith! Looking forward to traveling, yes. I'm spend the time to delve into my creativity. Free Metrical Pink Academy is definitely towards the top of the list. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and your daughter getting married. I love it. I love it. Yay. Guys, here's something crazy. You want to know something crazy? Free Motion Quilting Academy opens for enrollment. Am I getting my dates right? A month from today, a month from tomorrow, a month from now. One month. Again, like already. Can you believe it? I'm so excited. The rock stars in the current cohort are already working on their final projects. Um, I've had a few folks who started uh, the academy in the fall who have already finished and submitted their final work, which is just incredible. Absolutely incredible. We are going to have one heck of a graduation. And for the first time ever, when we have graduation for the academy this spring, so very beginning of May. Oh, look, all these fun little odd bits that I can subcut. Ha! Huh. I was like, wait, what are these back here? Oh, you are not quite big enough to become two. Okay. Not quite big enough to be two. Uh, but for the first time ever, we're, when we have our big old academy graduation ceremony in um, May, you will be able to sign up for the academy that same day. That has never been true. I've always had to say, get on the wait list. It's coming back soon. And for the first time ever, we're going to go straight into a new cohort. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Yes, graduating from Free Motion Quilting Academy and getting a Q16. Looking forward to going back to work. That sounds wonderful. So I'm not doing an early bird cost this time. So there will be um, a full pay and a three pay. Um, and it's going to be the same as it was in January, that it will be um, 227. I'm making sure that's right. Search my brain. Yes, 227 US full pay um, or three payments of 97. And here's here's the big thing with this, guys. It's all the new videos. So I just refilmed Free Motion Quilting Academy um, two weeks ago now, last week. Two, no, I think it was two weeks ago now. And um, it's, it's professionally videoed for the first time. Guys, I got the meander video back already. I, I think it's gonna it's gonna have to probably go on social at some point because you guys are gonna have to see it. It just is so jaw droppingly gorgeous. We have a, a front on view where I'm sitting behind my Juki. We have a top down view where I'm doodling, and when I'm stitching, we have a like side under the needle close up. Three camera angles, you guys. What? What? It is very fancy. Um, yes, if you are a current member of the academy, you will get the updates. Fear not, not gonna leave you hanging. Um, but yes, yeah, so this time around, uh, the price point will stay the same as January, even though it's all new professionally filmed videos. So it is it is the time to jump in, my dears. I'm so excited. It is the best iteration of the Academy yet. Um, I'm, summer is my favorite season. So the fact that we're kicking this off for a summer cohort, it's also the first ever summer cohort. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. All right, where are we at with these? It's one set, two set, three set, half set. Okay. Stick to my system so I don't mess up my math. So hopefully you guys are down for a chattery quilt along because that is my plan for the next few weeks. As we get into um, sewing units, I will share tips about sewing those units. Um, we're, we have a lot of bias edges in this quilt, so we're going to talk about that a bit. There will be lots of good education. But today, honestly, we just we are going to be chatty together. A couple of notes, though, as we're cutting. Let me check the comments first. Let's see. I know the new video. So current students, just as a heads up, um, the hope is that you will have the new videos by the end of the month, um, end of April. So you'll have time to watch them so that when the Academy opens for enrollment, you can gush to all your friends and tell them how magnificent they are because I am so proud of them. 
Um, we filmed for 37 hours over four days to refilm this academy. And it is entirely worth it. It is so worth the work. It looks so good. Um, it honestly, this 100% solidifies Free Motion Quilting Academy as the best quality, most comprehensive free motion quilting course on the market. I said it, I said it out loud, but it is. It is. And it will take you from being an anxious beginner quilter to a confident intermediate quilter. You will have the time of your life. It's just, it's thrilling. It's completely thrilling. All right. So here's some thoughts for today. Circling back to our quilt along. Can you tell I'm excited? That's why this is a celebration. There's just so much to be joyful about and thankful for, uh, even from the last year and heading into the year ahead. So um, thoughts for today as we're cutting. I want to make just a few notes on posture. We will talk extensively about sewing posture as we get into our piecing. And then even more as we head into May, we're going to do a quilting plan challenge where we actually talk about how to quilt this quilt um, as we're leading into the academy, right? But I want you to think about posture even here. Now, my posture is probably a little bit all over the place right now because I'm talking to you guys, right? I'm goofing off. Um, but if at all possible, just like when you're sewing, you want your uh, cutting surface to be in that zone kind of between your belly button and the bottom of your ribs. Because look how when I hang my arm down, this soft 90 degree angle, so this would be a true 90. So that anywhere kind of in this range, this soft 90 degree angle um, allows us to use our core for stability, right? And to gain motion through our shoulders, elbows, and wrists without straining them. If your table is too high and you're cutting like this, look at the angle my hand's at to try to use a rotary cutter, right? If I'm cutting too low and I'm way up over it, I'm gonna be hunching my shoulder into what I'm doing. And that will, you've actually got, all right, I'm gonna nerd out. You guys are used to this, right? Jennifer, you're here, support me in my nerdiness, all right? So you have your scapula, that's your shoulder blade, but your rib cage is actually under there too, all right? And if you hike your shoulder blade up like that, it can affect this top rib and it can get out of alignment and it will, it will essentially poke itself into the muscle tissue and you will end up with the worst pain right here. I know this because this is a chronic issue for me because I, I do that a lot when I'm sitting, when I'm typing, when I'm driving in the car, right? So we want to have our cutting surface at a height where we can drop those shoulders down, open up our chest, have our elbows at that gentle angle so that when we cut, I can use my shoulder, this much larger set of muscles to create the pressure down through my ruler. All right, I'm stable through my core. I can see what I'm doing with, it's not so far away that I need to bend, right? If I, um, the table that you guys are sitting on, there's actually a cutting mat on this sewing table down here. And when I'm so, when I'm cutting there, I end up bending over to see the numbers because I can't see them, it's too far away. This is close enough that my eyes can do their job. And then notice as I begin to cut, see how this is all, at a, this is all nice and straight. I'm not straining my wrist here. I'm not straining my wrist here. All of this is at very gentle angles. And again, using the bigger muscles of my shoulder and upper arm to create the smooth pressure through this rotary cutter. And then I simply go straight out, which is a very natural movement for your body. All right. That's how your, um, that's how your joints are designed to work. So we want to work with our bodies, not against them. All right. Let's see where are we at on here? 2020 had a great vacation before COVID 2021 permission called the Academy graduation. And you have a new great niece coming. I love it. Helen, you learned to zoom and you made new friends. I love it. That is amazing. Judith, yes, you can pick up exactly where you left off and you will get the new videos. Fear not. Um, you can use an AccuQuilt if you have the right dies. Um, I do not have a die list published at this time, but you can look at the instructions and like compare accordingly. They're all very standard shapes and very standard sizes. There's nothing funky with this quilt. Great question. Um, yay, Francie Jo. Yes, exactly. We don't want to mess up my muscles. Yep. Yes, Marie, I love how fabulously tall you are. I'm five six, so I'm like considered perfectly average, but I've always had tall friends, so I always feel small. Um, but yes, if you are um, if you are significantly taller, you know, like more than an inch or two, or significantly shorter than you know, somewhere in that like five five range, um, this becomes particularly relevant for you because unfortunately. 
table heights and things tend to be pretty standardized. Now, this table that I'm on right now, let me do a quick count. Let's see. Okay, we're good. I was like, let me make sure I know where I am in my cutting here. Uh, this table that I'm on right now, this is actually a coffee table. Like it's a, a rectangular coffee table um, that one of the rock stars, Winifred, I don't know if she's here. Um, she, she lives locally to me. She gave it to me. And John did this very amazing thing. He took the legs off. He went down to Home Depot and he bought two by fours. So the legs on this here, I'll actually tilt the camera so you guys can see this. So the legs on this are just simple two by fours. And you can see it's just, it's a simple coffee table. We spray painted the whole thing. Okay. But what he did was we, oh, now I'm going to have trouble getting this back to that nice, pretty angle that I had it at. There we go. Okay. Um, but we measured and we were able to make this table a custom height for me. Right. And it's made all the difference, honestly. So as we are all slowly getting back out into the world, um, you know, mask yourself up for an outing to Goodwill and find a um, find a coffee table with this relatively light but sturdy that you can take the legs off of and you can easily make a custom cutting table. And what I love about this too is this cutting table usually lives in front of the window over here, but I wanted to have this nice background and this kind of space for our time together. And it's very light and easy to pick up and to move etc. Another really good option for something like cutting is there are so many wonderful folding, um, like folding tables on the market now that have adjustable legs, the little, you remember like in school, the little like buttons that would adjust desks and things. Uh, there's lots of adjustable options on the market. So if you're in a sewing space that you have to pack it up frequently, um, getting the, there's ones that come about this size, the plastic top, and they actually fold in half. So they fold up to be like this big. And they have the metal adjustable legs on them. And they are great for things like cutting and pressing. Like I wouldn't put your sewing machine on one. They're too rattly for that. Um, but being able to put a, a cutting mat on top or a pressing board and have that at the right height, absolutely fabulous solution. So there's two ideas if you want kind of an affordable, customized cutting table situation. Polly! Yay! Okay, unicorn girl, same thing for you. Those tables are just down as well, right? Um, or like I said, making a custom leg situation with a tabletop. Because, I mean, we all understand why we live in a standardized world, right? Because like how, how from a manufacturing standpoint, right? The like overhead, whatever, the business of trying to make everything custom gets very expensive and very complicated, but we are creative people and we don't have to settle for hurting our bodies for the convenience of whoever made our table, right? We can find things with adjustable legs. We can change out the legs ourselves and make it suit our bodies uh, because we are each different and need to be um, able to have what suits us best so that we can be comfortable and all the, and safe, honestly, while we sew. All right. Get a door blank from Home Depot, super light and cheap, 36 wide, then Ikea trussle legs that are adjustable. Ikea has great trussle legs. That is a great tip, Jeannie. Love it. Love it. Hey, Lisa. Uh, and you use a plain door. Look at that. See? This is absolutely genius. Okay. One, two, three, these are only, yeah, four. Five. Okay. I'm just keeping track of how many I cut because I'm busy talking. I'm busy talking. Okay. Next up. Dun, da, da, da. Yes. And Ikea has great adjustable legs. There are many wonderful, accessible, affordable options out there. And I am all for it. Next question. What is your favorite quilt? that you made in the last year? And what is the quilt you are most looking forward to making this year? I promise I won't make us do this, like look back, look forward every single time we're together, but we're definitely doing it today, okay? Because we have come a long way in a year. So what is your favorite quilt that you've made in the last year? 
And what are you most looking forward to making or finishing, right? It might be something that you're like, well, I'm going to be finishing this quilt this year. What are you most looking forward to? All right. Yes, I love these ideas. Sharon says, I've set up a fabulous sewing nook with a large sewing table, tall cutting table, saddle stool, chest of drawers. Love, love, love. You know, I honestly, I think 2020 being home all the time has been a great reason uh, to customize our sewing spaces. Um, and if you have not yet done that, I, I think I think you get to grandfather that in. I think we get to grandfather that in under 2021 self-care, you know? All right, so let me see. I, I need to go back and think about my favorite thing or my least favorite thing. I think um, one of my favorite things of 2020 or the last year, because I didn't actually answer my own first question, um, is I had I had made this like comment right before the pandemic uh, to someone that I knew at the time that I just I really wanted to like know who my ride or die real life friends are, right? Um, and I had this incredible moment with my best friend Lexa that Lexa and I have known each other. Um, for about 15 years, but she was a friend that <laughs> if we were honest with each other, we both kind of kept expecting that the friendship would kind of fade as life happened. And it never did. See, I have made a mistake because I'm about to come up short on my cutting. Um, we both kind of kept expecting that, that life would take us different directions and it didn't and it didn't and it didn't. And finally this year, um, she moved to Seattle very recently but she found out last summer that she was going to be moving. And, and when she told me we were, we were at good word, we were all masked up. Um, Cause the inside of good words like wasn't open, but you could like get a drink at the bar and then go outside in Duluth. And um, we had this moment after years of friendship where we finally looked at each other and went, Oh my gosh, you're my best friend. And like, we'd had this moment of like looking back on everything we had gone through together over the last 15 years and we were like why have we never realized this before <laughs> so i think that was one of my most special moments uh, of 2020 all right so i have made a mistake somewhere because my math is not hold on wait a minute yeah i i ended up with weird bits let me grab another cut of fabric from over here all right this is my problem with talking and cutting as I have become significantly less efficient. Um, so I think that was one of my favorite moments of the last year. Of uh, finally, finally like recognizing this beautiful friendship that we had. Um, I think one of the things that I'm most looking forward to um, in the coming year is travel. Um, we were very fortunate to get to do a little bit of travel last year. We got to go to Yellowstone. We got to go to the beach a couple times. Um, but we've got some, we've got some big fun plan trips planned for this year. Um, and, and I hope that somewhere there, and I, I don't know exactly how this is going to work yet, but I hope that somehow that will include getting to see some of y'all in the flesh sooner rather than later. Uh, you amazing rock stars, you, um, so I think I'm looking forward to the possibilities of, of this community and and kind of like me and Lexa that we had this moment of been like, well, we came this far together, like we're gonna keep going. I, I feel the same way about you guys of like we've weathered, we've weathered the last year and like what exciting things are ahead now that we get to look forward to. All right, let's see. Um, all right, quilt question. So let's see some of these favorite quilts. Lisa said I've begun a long cap log cabin quilt, still working on it. Love it. Um, Susan said, I designed my first quilt of the lake that I live on. That is so special. Laura says, I made two memory quilt tops for my dad's shirts last year. And even though they're just tops, they're my favorite. Finishing them will be my goal for this year. Uh, Lisa says, I do work full time. So I only have a couple of these things to do any form of sewing. Yes. I, you know, that's one of the beautiful things. You know, when I started quilting, my kids were super little. And what I loved about quilting is I could do a little bit here and there and it would add up. And it stayed done. Like in a season of my life where it felt like nothing stayed done. The quilting stayed done, you know? Uh, let's see. Amy says, um, oh, Marie, that's a really good idea 
to make like a little like whoop to raise up your table. Yep, I think that's a great idea. You could also get um bed risers. You know, like college kids use to raise their beds up to be tall enough to go over their dressers. Um, I've used bed risers to raise cutting tables before and because it just adds like eight inches or so. Super helpful. Amy says, my favorite make is Bonnie Hunter's Mystery Grassy Creek, which I gifted to my granddaughter. Looking forward to doing this quilt along and practicing a lot of free motion quilting. I love it. Carrie says, my favorite quilt was the Free Motion Quilting Academy graduation product, uh, projects and Bonnie Hunter's Frolic. I'm excited to work on the Orophil FPP animals this year. Yes, and some EPP. Um, yes, figuring out those, figuring out the cutting. I, yeah, Polly, I understand. <laughs> Uh, Sharon says, I made a quote for my 94 year old mom in long term care and free motion quilted it. She loves it. And yes, Sharon has the most amazing Canada themed fabric for this quilt along. She sent me a picture and it is fabulous. I'm so excited. Going to be amazing. I'm going to read more, guys. I just am also, you know, I'm taking my sweet time on this cutting. If you just stand here and cut straight through, like y'all are probably done with all your cutting at this point. You're probably like, Holly Ann, you slow poke. I just got to chat it up, you guys. I got to hang out with y'all and chat. You know, if you've been if you've been around in the Quilting Rockstars for a minute, and many of you here with me today are uh, OG uh, rock stars, and um, I'm just, I'm so annoyed that this is not, that should have been the right, I think I must have lost too much when I was trimming up. Are you tall enough? Hang on. Boop, 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 boop. Um, you're not tall enough that way. How frustrating. All right, Holly Ann. Be more precise next time, child. All right. Um, you know, I, I used to be able to go um, live every week, and I so treasured that time together. And that, um, especially for Q1 of this year, just had some, needed to take some personal time. And, uh, but as, as we headed into quarter two, I knew like I wanted ways to be back with you guys. And uh, those of you who are members of the Quilting Rockstar Guild, which is for folks who have gone through the academy, you know that we're incorporating more social time. And I'm so excited to have this time together this month. Uh, just, just being live, being social, chatting, taking forever to cut as one does. Okay, I'm going to finish cutting this and, and then I'll let myself read more comments. All right. Okay, I think I have everything. Bum, bum. All right, so this is now like random stray bits. Let's clean this up. Bum, ba, da, ba, ba. Okay, so this is my small background squares that are now D for done. All right, let's read some more uh, favorite quilts and then I'll cut the rest of this. Um, let's see, and Sherry says, and of course my almost finished free motion quilting academy sampler. Yes. Uh, John says, best thing last year was retiring and discovering a stricken story. Oh my gosh, John, I'm so glad you're here. Um, let's see, Jeannie says, I'll meet you at Goodward Brewing on November 3rd at 6.30 p.m. on our way to Florida. You got yourself a date. I don't know what, well, what day of the week is that? Hold on. Hold, please. We got to make sure they're open. Let's see. November, it's a Wednesday. You're in luck. They, they're only open Wednesday to Sunday. All right, so Jeannie and I are going to Goodward this year. <laughs> I love it. Cindy said, there's also, by the way, Jeannie, if you're passing through on your way to Florida, they are, this month, they're opening a courtyard um, in Duluth. So if you, like, want a pit stop for the night, you literally could, like, stop in Duluth. Just, you know shameless travel plug here for my town. Um, Cindy says favorite quote last year was the space quilt I made for granddaughter three fabric was originally purchased for big brother, but with the six year old sister. I love that so much. Yes. Coming to, Ooh, man, Marianne, I need to come to Atlanta, Orlando. I feel like we can make that happen. Kate's down there. We have a big meetup, a string and story, tough kitten crafts meetup. See, I'm just going to have to like travel around and say hi to people. That's what I need to do. Um, John says, best thing this year is being able to hug my mom in the nursing home and graduating from the academy. I love it. So he's going to make grandson number two a quilt. Um, and you're here. Love it. And you're heading out for spring break. I love it. And you're going to complete, uh, Mary is going to make an EPP quilt. 
Cheryl is making a toddler size vintage Star Wars. Oh, that sounds so great. Yes, yes, yes. Of course you want to stop in Duluth. What kind of question is that, Jane? That's like asking if I want to come to Canada. Oh, can't wait. Okay. Um, let's see. What are my favorites from the last year? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to think about that. Y'all keep answering that as we're going along. Let's see. Let's do our star bits, maybe? Yes. I need eight. Oh, yes. And then they have to get cut in half. Okay. Again, my edges, y'all. My edges. Whole mood. A whole mood. Okay, no, you are good. So you stay like that. Kate Britton! Hey, babe. How are you, my dear? How are you? This is just, this is just going to be a mess. Okay. Here we are. Here we are. Boop, boop, boop. I think my favorite thing that I made last year might have been the range backpacks. I'm really worried that I'm forgetting something that I should be like more something about. Um, but those range backpacks were really special for two, well, for three reasons. One, um, you know, I got to go to QuiltCon last year before the world closed. That was kind of the last thing that happened before the world closed. And I went with the broken ankle. It was, it was a whole mess. It was a whole mess. My sweet friend Darcy went with me, kept me alive. She was basically like my caregiver on that trip because I was such a mess. Um, <laughs> Kate was there. <laughs> she got to, she got to witness all of that. Um, but we bought the supplies together and we made our first backpacks together, Darcy and I did. And uh, that was one of the last times that I've seen Darcy since then because she's extremely high risk and we haven't been able to see each other in person. And uh, so getting to not only go on this trip with a friend of mine, get stuff for kind of my first real 3D object to sew, right? Um, but then getting to make those memories of making the first one together. Um, and then I made the rest with you guys. And I made a whole bunch of them. Like I made a pile of range backpacks. And then I got to take them to Yellowstone. And, um, you know, all of us who went on that Yellowstone trip, so my family plus one of our nannies, Grace. Is this how many I need? Is that all I need? Perfect. Okay. And then these have to be cut on the diagonal. So I usually like to line these up on a line. We don't always use lines for cutting fabric. You know, we use our rulers. But it gives me... A good way to kind of square them up ahead of time and then place the ruler. And so when you're cutting fabric to measure, right, we put um, the ruler like on the line and then we're cutting, right, to get everything accurate. So don't, we don't come up a little bit short. When I'm cutting across these like this, I back my ruler up just a hair or so. So my blade hits right at the corner to corner. All right. Ta-da. So anyway, I think then getting to take the range back, uh, backpacks to Yellowstone, ooh, right up there with uh, as well was thread painting national park panels. So Yellowstone, Tetons, Great Smokies. Um, and that was something else that I got to do with you guys. And then I took those quilts around and took pictures. So I think those are some of my 2020 uh, quilt highlights. Why is my phone suddenly not staying open? Let's see. Yes, a milestone quilt. I love that idea. Yes, and Kate says her favorite from last year was Spool, which is currently in my cabinet waiting to be quilted. Um, Kate, random. This is random for the context of this conversation, but I promise it makes sense in my head and I can explain later. Uh, do you happen to know off the top of your head the dimensions of Spool? Very curious. Um, let's see. One of your favorite quilts you did from last year was a Nutcracker quilt. Love it. Hey, Mary. You surprised your husband with a lap quilt. He thought it was for vision quilting practice, but it was his quilt. That's so fun. Uh, Valentine wand pattern. Love it. 
Love it. I think what I'm most looking forward to for this year, let me make sure I'm cutting the right thing here. Um, okay, more of the same size squares. And I feel like I've probably already messed this up. Yeah, I'm 100% sure I've already messed this up. <laughs> Talking and cutting, you guys. Maybe I shouldn't be allowed to do that. Maybe I should not, in fact, be allowed to do that because I think I'm going to come up short again because I'm talking and cutting. Um, this year, I'm very excited about multiple projects. So a project that I've already finished that I'm very excited about is actually my uh, Academy sampler, which you can see over here at the edge. Um, you know, I... As, as an educator, I consider it poor practice to assign something to your students that you have not done yourself. Um, and yet I totally did that to the Fall Academy. Um, and you guys put up with me anyway. Absolutely amazing. Because I added the sampler uh, to the curriculum and my plan had been to make it along with you. And then Papa Joe died and the appendectomy and the ankle and it, it just didn't happen. <laughs> And uh, Jeannie has very lovingly given me tons of crap about it, <laughs> which is fine. It was well-deserved. Um, but I finally I finally made mine. I pieced the top last fall. I finally quilted it. And it ended up being just the perfect quilt uh, to be quilting on for the refilming of the Academy. The colors just ended up being exactly right, et cetera. So that's a project I've already finished that I'm very excited about. Um, here in Q2, the project I'm very excited to start and finish is this Starbright Quilt Along with you guys. Um, I'm also working on the Orifil Color Builders, and we'll be working on that all year, which here I'll turn this. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it is these, um, it's a thread subscription, but it includes these foundation paper pieced animals. And so there's one for each month. We're four months in now. Um... And then another project I'm really excited about is this 100 Days 100 Blocks. This is the year, you guys. I started that quilt in 2019. It is arguably my longest standing whip. And it is time, 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 time for that quilt to get done. Um, my ambitious goal is to have it as a top by the end of this week, but I don't, I don't actually know if that will work. We will see. We will, we will see if that happens. But that's the ambitious goal. All right, let's see, where are you guys at? If you need or want extra fabric, um, Amy, send me an email, because I do still have fabric of all these colors. Yeah. So let me know if you're needing extras, if you're, if you're quilting or if you're cutting also betrays you. Etc. Um, because I still have extras or not not so much extras. I still have fabric on hand of all of these colors. Um, and in fact, I will make it a goal by the end of this week, maybe to get it up as yardage in my shop to make that easy for you guys. Great question. Yes, Judith, don't worry. There will be a replay. There will be a replay. As we approach um, the one hour mark, we will probably wrap up here very shortly and then I will finish my cutting off camera as I extend the process greatly by chatting. Um, <laughs> Amy, I love how you're like, e yeah, that made a mistake. <laughs> that is, I think that is the hardest thing is just when you're like, I know I have just enough fabric, but if I don't do this, if I don't puzzle it out properly, I'm going to be in trouble. I'm real bad at puzzling it out. Real bad. All right. Let's see. Where am I at? How many, how many of these do I need? Where am I at? This is my problem. Oh, what? <laughs> I thought I needed 64 of these and I only need 32. I feel significantly better now. I'm, I'm still going to come up a little bit. 
off, I think, because I have, I, these are going to mess me up because I was not being careful. When I cut out my navy, I was so careful. I like laid everything out and planned my map and planned my cuts and double checked like how much salvage to cut off. And it was all really lovely and came out perfect. And here I'm, over, I'm just like whacking at stuff over here. This is like weed eater fabric cutting the way I'm doing it. It's not very efficient. I, re I recommend being more mindful than I'm currently being. Yes, I could have continued across my mat, but that would have required math. And I don't trust my math right now. See previous commentary. Oh, I'm going to come in so close. I'm going to be like two squares away. Surely some bit of this will be the right dimensions. Surely. What am I doing? Yeah, that's not. Mm -hmm. Two squares, y'all, two squares. Do you think out of somewhere in this in this scrap heap I can find? See, this is this comes out, yep, yeah, it's just not quite right. It's that strip. That's the one that cost me, you guys. Whatever I did wrong there. All right. I'm gonna grab a bolt and grab what I need, but lest I be distracting you from your precise quilting, let me see if there's any questions left. Yes, if you get the pattern. So Jennifer, great question. I'm so glad. Um, I'm so glad you guys asked a great question. So let's do one last second of housekeeping and then I will wrap up this cutting hour. So if you are just now joining us and you're going, what's up? What is this? Welcome to the Starbright Quilt Along. We are making this big old modern traditional star quilt together over the next four weeks. It is a big block quilt. It is so fun. Um, and four blocks makes a nice generous throw. So um, this quilt is called Star Bright, but the pattern is available inside the Winter Hexagon Minis uh, pattern bundle in my shop. There's a link in the caption of this video that will take you to a landing page that has all the information. So it talks about the thread collection. It talks about going over to the shop. It has our schedule and you have three purchase options, okay? You can get the big old bundle and that has your pattern and your fabric and the Quilting Rockstar thread collection. You can get a smaller bundle that's just pattern and fabric or you can just get the pattern. If you're like, I wanna pick fabric from my stash um, and go ahead and get started today and not have to wait on shipping, okay? So you can click through the link in the caption of this video to go over and find all of that on the String and Story website. Um, we will be back next week, starting with some of our unit piecing. We'll be talking through techniques about that as we go. Um, we'll be here together on YouTube for an hour each week over the next four weeks. And then as we get a little closer to the end of April, I will tell you about the quilting plan challenge that I'm gonna be hosting. It'll be totally free. And we'll be talking through quilting plans for the star bright quilt. So how might we actually quilt this big old quilt because as fun as it is to make a top together, uh, my ultimate goal is to be equipping you to make it as a finished quilt as well. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Rebecca, I love it. Yeah, do as I say, not what I do. That's exactly what I say when I'm teaching sometimes. So you can get just the pattern, yes. Um, I will email folks who have the pattern. I will be emailing out that color chart comparison. So if you're like, ooh, I wanna make sure I'm on the email list for that. Go get your pattern now because I'll, I'll try to send that out later today. Um, any final questions? Um, oh, make sure you hit subscribe to my YouTube channel. It'll make it easy to find me week after week. Um, and as we head into the coming weeks, I'll be back to updating my blog, which usually include a tutorial video and those videos get posted here as well. Guys, I am so thrilled to be here with you each week over the next four weeks. Um, happy cutting. I will meet you back here on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And until then, have a glorious week. Mwah. Bye for now.